Hello, and welcome to The Connection Church. We're so glad that you're here with us today. We're a casual place with serious faith. If this is your first time with us, you are our VIP. So text the word WELCOME to 512-359-3400 and head out to the red carpet in the lobby to receive a free gift just for you. Want to follow along with today's message? You can find the connection points as well as special events and past messages on the Connection Church app, available on all platforms. All right. Hey, good afternoon. It's so great to see you this afternoon. I'm Cole Phillips, the lead pastor of the Connection Church, and uh, and thank you for being here. I also want to give it up for those who are watching online right now. We're streaming on Facebook, so come on, just to let everybody know that it's happening right here. And uh, and we want to invite you if you're watching online to come and be with us in person. And especially today, we want to give it up for our VIPs in the house. All right, come on. We got some VIPs here today, and and we are a family expecting guests, and and I hope today that as you drove onto our parking lot, there were some people out there who were waving you in and welcoming you, and you experienced that. If you have kids, that you got to check them in to our incredible Connection Kids Ministries over here, where uh, we got some great leaders, but not only that, they are raising leaders for the future, okay? So they have a great time over there. And then you came in here, and you got to experience some incredible music, right? Some incredible worship music, so phenomenal from this talented team. And today, I hope that this message really encourages you and helps you as we continue this series called Two. Four one two four one. It's all about relationships and dating and love and marriage and even sex and and you know we're at all at different places in our relationships. We're gonna have some fun today as we talk about this, but also um, I believe that today has the potential to change the trajectory of your future and of your relationships today as we discover what God has to say uh, about our relationships. And and this is for different stages. Like if you're single in the house today, uh, this this is something that you need to hear. Uh, Really, uh, today's message is kind of directed at you. Um, because you want to know this stuff before you get into the thick of it. But if you're married today, this is going to be for you as well. If you're single again, this is for you. By the way, how many of you today in the, in the room are married? You're married. Put your hands in the air. All right. Hands in the air. How many of you today, uh, some of you are single. We got some singles in the room. Raise your hand. All right. Singles, look around. Keep your hands in the air. Look around. You may want to talk to each. No, actually, after today's message, I would suggest that you don't. You put, you put that on hold because we're going to be talking about finding the right one, but the right one may not be who you think it is today, right? Um, it seems like today we are waiting longer. We're more in, unsure and insecure about um, our relationships, about marriage, so we're waiting longer and longer before we get married, but then also it seems like our marriages are falling apart at a faster rate than ever before. And so we're out there looking for the right one. I heard about this girl who uh, she grew up in a in a you know in a ch- Christian home and in the church, and then she went off to college. You know what happens when you go off to college, right? Uh, she began to like sow her wild oats. And she started just kind of drinking, you know, every day and was just in a daze and all of this. And one day she went to a party and, and at the party she met a, a dude. There was a guy who was there and he was awesome. Like he was this solid uh, Christian guy and uh, he started talking with her 
and he was just kind of speaking life over her, and uh, you know she she could tell that there was something really different about this guy, and they end up talking like. For, for hours. And then the next day, she goes home to tell her mom about this incredible uh, Christian guy that she met. And she's like, mom, this guy, he's the one. Like, he's solid. He's got his life together. And he was, he was really kind of just speaking as he was seeing the potential in my life. He was speaking into my life. This is the guy I'm going to marry. And her mom looks at her with kind of pity and compassion in her eyes and said, said honey, uh, he wasn't trying to marry you. He was trying to convert you. He was trying. He wanted to lead you to Jesus, okay? Because so often we're looking for the right one instead of being concerned about becoming the right one, right? When we look for the right one, who's it all about? It's about me. It's about I'm trying to find that right person for me, and we will start to take shortcuts. We will start to shortchange the process, and we start getting all freaked out, and, and we try to force something that we shouldn't be forcing. And you know how this is. Like, you're in the room. You look across the room. Your eyes lock with, with hers, and, uh, and, and then things start to get real spiritual and real spooky and, like, mystical. You're like, you're like oh, this is the one. I mean, she's from Buda and I'm from Buda. She drives a car and I drive a car. She eats food and I eat food. We finish each other's sandwiches, right? Yeah, all that. We this must be God's will for me, right? And so we try to force things before it's time. And I want to encourage you today to let God do his divine work in you through a season of preparation. And some of you are like, I am well seasoned. Okay. I'm well seasoned. But you know, you know, the longer, if it's taking longer than you hoped, and if your season of preparation is, is longer than you thought it would be, just know that that means that the potential for God's blessing in your future is greater than you could ever imagine. Just let God do his work. What are we looking for when we're looking for that right person? Many times we're looking for the right person to make us happy. And we meet that person and we're like, oh, they make me so happy. And if you say that, you're probably just delusional, okay? Because if this other person can truly make you happy, then what happens on that day when you wake up and now you're no longer happy? Whose fault is it then? Well, you're not making me happy anymore, right? Listen, that person, that other person, they can't make you happy. You're saying, but, but, but Pastor Cole, I'm not asking for all that much. I'm just looking for a little, you know, X and a little Y and, and a little Z. Well, actually, maybe a lot of Z, but, uh, but you know, I'm, not, I'm just a simple guy. I'm not asking for all that much, but you're asking the wrong person to bring you happiness. Uh, it's Jesus that can really finally, fully, and totally satisfy what you're looking for in your, in your heart, in your life. Look at Ephesians 5, verse 25. Great passage here on marriage and God's design for marriage. And I'd encourage you to just read the whole passage, but, but I'm going to read the, these verses starting with verse 25 that says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. So, so husbands, how are we to love our wives? Like Christ loved the church. How did Christ love the church? He died for, for the church. That's how much he loved the church. And that's a, a picture of sacrificial love. That is a high calling, guys, to, to love our wives that way. And why did he do that? Because he wanted to make us holy. And, and God uses our marriage to, to make us more like Jesus. That's really his ultimate goal. And, um, you know, it talks about the washing with the word, which is the picture of baptism, biblical baptism. Today, we're going to be celebrating life change through baptism. And so that's so exciting. Yeah, you guys know we love to celebrate that. 
Um, but, uh, but let's see where we're at. You know, here's the deal with marriage. God never intended for marriage to make us happy. Instead, marriage is to make us holy. It's to make us more like God. And sometimes that happens through the difficult times. Sometimes that happens through the, through the, you know, the, the hard times. And, and that's how we grow. But, but then I'm also looking for the right person to make me whole, right? I want somebody, the whole, you know, we think here's this girl or here's this guy and they are going to complete me, right? Complete me, Jerry Maguire style. You had me at hello. And, and so I'm looking for somebody else to complete me. But Here's the deal. Jesus is really the only person that can make you whole. He's the only one who can make you complete. And when you put someone else in that center of your life where only Jesus should be, you will always be let down, frustrated, and disappointed, okay? Because other people make a poor substitute for God in our lives. You're putting expectations on them that are unrealistic in your life. In fact, Jesus is the one who can make you complete. And so Colossians 2.10 says, so you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. How are we complete? We're complete in Jesus. But, but I, want, I want her to fix me. You know, uh, she says, I want him to fix me. They can't fix you. You know why? Because they're broken themselves, okay? And you can't put two broken, imperfect things together and have something perfect, have a perfect marriage. And so we're also looking for the right person to make us passionate. We're looking for romance, right? I want, I want the warm fuzzies, and I want, uh, I want the, the tingles, you know, right? That's what I'm looking for. What's the problem with that? Well, chemistry only lasts so long. You got chemistry. Well, chemistry fades. It doesn't last. In fact, statistics show that typically that period, that phase in a relationship will last between six weeks and like a year and a half. That's how long it's going to last. And then it's gone. It's not sustainable, right? Because then real life sets in. So how do I know if that, uh, that other person if that's the right person for me. Do you ever think about that? How do I know if I've found the right person? How do I know if the person that I'm dating right now is the right person for me? What, what if I make the wrong choice? What if I pick wrong? And what, the problem is we bought into this Hollywood fantasy, right? That Hollywood fantasy is like, uh, is, is like everybody's got a soulmate, Right, God made that one perfect person for me, and my job is to go out and find the right person. If I find the right person, then I'm going to be fulfilled. Then we're going to have a great marriage. You know what the problem with that is? Like, just think, for example, if one person, let's say it's you, you know, you're searching for the right person, but you end up marrying the wrong person. You know, that person is the right person for somebody else, and now you've married them. So now that means the person they were supposed to marry is going to marry the wrong person too, right? And now it's a continuous domino chain, and now everybody in the world is married to the wrong person, all because you made the wrong choice. That's a heavy burden, right? No, the truth is there are any number of right persons for you, and some of you are like, no, 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 Cole, you don't understand. I married the wrong person. Um, well, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. I mean, you may have. You may have chosen poorly. And, I, you know, I don't know. But I do know that once you step up and you say, I do, then, then that person becomes the right person for you. Okay? That is God's person in your life. And uh, so how many of you, you, you enjoy going to weddings? For me, I'm like, uh, I like the cake. I go for the cake, okay? Um, <laughs> and I uh, love the cake. And my favorite kind of cake is red velvet cake. I mean, it is incredible. I just, I love red velvet cake. I love eating red velvet cake. 
just looking at a red velvet cake is somewhat satisfying. So, you know, sometimes I'm surfing the web and I just, you know, I go to, I, I go to those websites, you know, like uh, Bon Appetit, just to look at pictures of cake. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. So <laughs> looking at the cake pictures, and then, and then, of course, these sites, they have the, the recipes, right? That's how we get our recipes, and it's got the ingredients. In order to make the picture, we got to have all the right ingredients, and then we got to follow the right directions in the right order, right? That's really important if you want to get the cake to taste right. If you don't use the wrong ingredients or you follow the wrong order, wrong directions, it tastes terrible, so, so, you know, when it comes to the cake, you got you to gotta not just look at the picture and try to do that. You got to follow the directions. Some people, however, if you've ever watched, you know, nailed it, you know, it doesn't always turn out like the picture. So I found some, some, some examples of this, right? So like you've got the uh, superhero cake, the, the perfect picture, and then you've got, you know, the, the sad result. Okay, or you've got the Little Mermaid cake, and then you've got somebody making the clown from it. Okay, uh, you've, got, you've got the emoji cake, and then you've got the one that uh, looks like you just got up out of bed. The emoji just got up out of bed in the morning. Maybe you dropped it on the way. Um, so, you know, it, you've got to, what's the problem? You've got to follow the process. It's the process that produces the picture, right? You can't shortchange the, the process. And, um, and so what is the perfect picture of marriage? The perfect picture of marriage is spending every day with your best friend. It's spending your nights under the covers in intimacy with them. It's living out God's shared purpose for your life together. It's having some kids who know Jesus and love Jesus. It's growing old together and reaching the end of your life where you're more deeply in love with one another than ever, right? That is the picture that we, that we want. And so often we look at the picture and we shortchange the process. Like I brought, I got here a gigantic uh, wedding cake here that, uh, that is the picture of what we want. And it also, it also tells us what is the process. What is the process? And there's this spiritual foundation. And then you've got the social, um, you've got the social layer and the personal layer, the emotional layer, and the physical layer. And all of this is the process that you want to follow. But do we follow this process today in our relationships no, no, we don't. Many times what we do when we start a relationship today is we go right for the physical, right? It becomes physical really fast. We want to get to the sexy stuff, right? And so, you know, and we get physical and then, then she says, but, but do you love me? Do you love me? And he says, oh, baby, I love you. Of course I love you, right? Uh, until things get inconvenient, and then, you know, then it's like uh, not so much anymore, right? But uh, what happens is many times we will jump under the covers in a relationship so that God can no longer cover our relationship, right? Because we've taken it into our own hands. And once you cross that line and you start getting really physical really fast, you know the emotions come into play real quick, right? The emotions come into play and, you know, she makes me feel so la, 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 la. And uh, I feel for you, uh, you know, the way you make me feel, the way you make me, you really, t come on. All right. So, so anyway, emotions, the way you make me feel, you make me feel. And, um, and so the, what's the problem with feelings is that feelings fade, right? Feelings are not sustainable. We already said that statistics say that the feelings are going to last six weeks to 18 months, and they're not enough to sustain and to build a lifetime on. And then once we get through all of that, then we start to get to know them for reals, and then we realize they're messed up. They're messed up. They're not who I thought they were, right? They, why? Because they've been on their best behavior. You know, the problem is when we start 
When we start uh, dating someone today, then we think we already know everything about them, right? How? Because you have stalked their social media and you've seen the places they go. You've seen what they like, what they don't like, the, the food that they like to eat, all their friends. You see all this stuff, but what's, what's the problem? That's their highlight reel. That's not reality. They are lying to you and you are lying to them. Okay, uh, it, you, you, so, so you start to get to know each other and you find out they're not who you thought they were, but now you've already started building all of this, okay? And then you get to the, the, this social piece right here. Now, this social piece, check it out. This is where you, you get to know their friends, right? You get to know their friends and what do you find out about their friends? They're more messed up. They're more messed up than, uh, than they are, okay? Then you're like, man, okay, so they're friends, but then you've got some honest friends, perhaps. You've got a, a friend who will tell you the truth. Maybe it's one of your friends or maybe it's one of her friends, one of their friends that look at this and they go, this is not good. You guys are a mess. Don't do this. They're waving the warning flags. What should you do when your wise friend tells you to put the brakes on the relationship? Listen to them. Listen to them, right? Proverbs 19.20 says, get all the advice and instruction you can so you will be wise the rest of your life. See, that's what we really need in our relationships is some wisdom. And so we got to listen to some godly advice. Now, who are you going to listen to? You're going to listen to somebody who, ha- who is building a godly, lasting relationship, not your cousin Eddie who doesn't know up from down. And, you know, that's not the person you want to you be taking advice from. And what, the key here is you need to look at their other relationships, not just how they treat you, but how do they treat other people, particularly ladies, how does he treat his mom, how does he treat his mom, okay? Oh, but yeah, he, he, he doesn't treat her well, but, but he treats me so nice. He treats, he's so good to me, right? Yes, until you get married. And then over time, he will begin to normalize you and treat you like he does everybody else, all right? So look at their other relationships in, in the process. But then what do we do here? Now we've got all of this happening. And if, we, if we've made it this far, then all of a sudden we come in and we go, you know what we need? We need God to bless all of this, right? I'm going to ask God to, we'll, we'll get married and we'll ask God to sanctify and to, to bless our relationship and bless our marriage. Only the problem The problem is, whoa, it doesn't doesn't stand. It falls over, right? And and this is what we end up getting because there's not a solid foundation. And you're like, well, we're going to get married, and then we're going to go on a a 7 to 10-day vacation and call it a honeymoon. But then you come back, and there's more problems now, right? Because now you're into real life. And, and uh, some of us, we say, well, I'll just have some kids and that'll fix everything. Yes, it will. <laughs> it will. Um, so so you know, the, the thing is, if it's bad in the engagement, it's going to get worse in the marriage. Here's what we think. Here's what we think. You know, a marriage ceremony, I love this. Um, there's an order. There's a process, right? There's, you walk down the aisle, and you come to the altar, and you sing a hymn, right? It, the process is I'll alter him. I'll alter him. And so she thinks, that's what I'm going to do. I will alter him. I'm going to change him once we get married. It's not going to work. You know why? Because he's thinking, I'm going to change her, Okay, and so we've got, we've got to understand that, that um, we've got to get this stuff right ahead of time because it's not just about getting the right, the right levels in the right order. It's about becoming the right person and laying that right foundation in your life. Listen, the physical, the physical part of all of this, you know, it is big enough. It is big enough to support me. That's, that's all. 
That's all I can do is, is it, it supports me. But, but the spiritual, this spiritual foundation, check this out. It's big enough. Let's get that out of the way. It's big enough for me and for my wife, Pam, and for our kids to build our entire lives, family, and future on. That's the spiritual foundation of our lives. And, um, you know, Jesus, he said this, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in, torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on the bedrock. And so that's the way we want to build it. But, but you may be saying, well, Pastor Cole, I didn't do it the right way, and I'm in the middle of my marriage, and, and I didn't do it the right way. What do I do about this? I would just want to say to you, don't give up. Don't give up, but it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. But what you want to do is you want to take all this stuff off the, off the table and start with a spiritual foundation. That means, that means putting God in his rightful place in your heart and your life, okay? That you begin to do that, and you're like, well, Wait a minute, I gotta have this. I gotta have this. This is, you know, this is so important. We have we've elevated this to a level where it doesn't belong. Okay? We think uh, we think that the physical is one of our basic human needs. This is what we've been taught. It's not. It's not like it's not like air and and food and water. It's not a basic sex is not a basic human need. Okay? Uh, do you know how I know? Because people have actually, believe it or not, I've heard, people have lived their entire life well into their elderly years without sex. It is, it is possible, okay? So you've got to put this stuff on hold and you've got to begin to build the spiritual foundation in your life. And then the second thing you want to do is go social. You go social, okay? What do you do here? You begin to surround yourself with some people, some godly people who are not perfect, but they're on the journey. They're, they're on the journey, and you get those people into your life. You know how we do that here at the Connection Church? Connection groups. You want to have some people. You're like, really? You're, you're pushing connection groups? We're talking about marriage? Yes, because this stuff is going to get really hard, and so you need to make sure you've got You've developed the relationships in your life to encourage you, to give you godly counsel, to, um, to help you when things get hard. And then you're going to get personal, okay? At this point, you're going to get personal, and you're going to begin to open up your life. You're going to begin to open up your life at that point and, and take some responsibility about what, what you've really done, what's really going on. You're going to say, I've, I've messed up. Here's how, I, here's how I've blown it, and I'm sorry, and I love you, and I value you. I'm committed to you. And, and as you begin to open up your heart and your life to them, that's intimacy. You know what intimacy means? It's into me see. It's opening up my life. Guess what? When you do that, what's going to happen? The emotions are going to come. All of a sudden, you're going to start feeling it. You know, and it's going to be based on some good stuff. And then once the emotions come, now, now the emotions, listen, love is not a feeling, but love can produce strong feelings. Okay, so the feelings come back, and then you can put the physical on top of that. And the physical, this is, you know, this is great stuff. This is great stuff. It, once you've got the, the foundation built in the right order, and some of us, we, we were like, well, I, I just want to, you know, I'm gonna do this. You can't, you can't, you, you cannot bypass this. Okay? If you do it in any other order, it, you're not gonna produce the right picture. This is the this is the order because we've got to have Jesus in his proper place. The foundation is what is so important. The top is really good, but you gotta have the foundation in place because another person will never fill that void in your life that only God can fill. Your spouse, come on, 
Your spouse can never give you what only God can. They never could. Your ex can never give you what only God can. They never could. You've got to release them. You've got to let them go. Because when two complete, whole people come together as one in Christ, that produces something beautiful in your life. And that is the picture. And we're going to follow the process. Listen, he is the right one for you. And he can make you into the right one so that you're able to come together with someone else. Let's stand together and let's pray in this place. God, we thank you for the picture that you've given us in your word of your plan for relationships. And we know that it's good. And so often in the process, we get, we get confused, we get broken God, instead of looking to someone else to meet those needs that only you can meet, help us first to look to you, to put you in your rightful place in our heart and our life. Lord, for some of us today, our decision is going to be to say, Jesus, I need you to be the foundation of my life that I can build my life on, that I can build my family on, that I can build my future on. And you do that simply by opening your heart and your life to him and saying, dear Lord Jesus, I need you in my life. Thank you for giving your life for me on the cross. Today, I wanna give you the pieces of my life. I ask that you would take them and make them into something new and something whole and something beautiful. I ask that you would change me from the inside out and make me part of your forever family. And from now on, by your spirit's power, I wanna follow hard after you. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so awesome, so good. Hey, listen, we're going to celebrate.